from this lone weaver queen to a massive backyard colony. Check out the most amazing contained tree ant nest you'll ever see. The amazing green weaver ant. She's big, beautiful, and has complex behavior that I could watch all day. Of all the species I deal with, this ant is by far the most difficult ant to raise to colony stage. They are the trickiest to get going and are notoriously fussy about the exact environment they need to ensure success. So imagine my excitement at meeting Dr. Chris Schell, a professional ecologist who is one of his many projects has successfully raised one of the most interesting ant colonies you'll ever see. Check it out. Chris has a thriving colony of thousands of weavers located in an outdoor banyan style fig tree. But how did he do it? Well, let's step back to when he first acquired his lone weaver queen from Cairns, Queensland, where these ants just love the humidity and hot climate. The queen was placed in a wide five centimetre short tube with a sponge plug for quick access, a small amount of damp cotton for humidity and a green tint to mimic being surrounded by leaves. She was fed a tiny drop of honey every day and very quickly laid her first eggs. Key to success, however, was temperature and humidity. These ants love a humid environment and thrive in sticky weather. It would make sense, therefore, to keep them over a heat pad. However, Chris said that any time he tried to raise these ants over 28 degrees Celsius, they would die. So the temperature was kept at 23 degrees. However, the humidity was controlled by a natural terrarium environment at a later stage. Soon, the first workers emerged. However, the queen was still given no protein until the colony reached around 20 to 30 workers. This was to prevent mold issues and she also had enough protein stored in her body that this food source was not needed early. At around 30 workers, the colony was moved into a terrarium which was densely planted. This led to naturally high humidity from plant transpiration. Ventilation was excellent with airflow entering through the base and exiting near an overhead LED light that mimicked natural blue rich sunlight. The tube was held horizontally above the ground to ensure it was kept dry. Plants and sticks connected the test tube to the rest of the enclosure and the sponge plug was removed. Slowly over two weeks, they eventually relocated to a nest they built within the plants. After six months and surviving a winter with no heating and taking no food, it was time to move the bursting colony to an outdoor fig tree. Existing nests were cut down inside the terrarium to encourage the ants to relocate. A moat with a touch of detergent was added to prevent invading species. And within three days, the colony migrated onto the tree. We'll see over time how the colony and plant grow together. But first, let's look at some of their amazing behaviors. First, feeding. Like most ants, this species works together like a highly oiled machine to gather protein. The strategy in this case is to immobilize the prey by isolating each limb, stretching them out so they are defenseless, reminding me of a medieval torture chamber. They then march the unfortunate insect to the nest where they're kept in storage, like these examples. And then they are fed on over a period of time. And if you doubt the power of their mandibles, just look at the reaction of this unfortunate cricket when it is nipped by this ferocious lady. No creature is spared. 
worms. Caterpillars. Grasshoppers. Spiders. Beetles. Cockroaches. Lots of flies. And whatever this poor creature could be. And for a sugar sauce, well, Chris tops up this sugar water every morning. The thousands of ladies in this nest flock to it daily and it has become a gathering point of the nest. Also, these green weaver ants have a symbiotic relationship with aphids. They farm them for their sugar-rich honeydew which they feed on for energy. In return, the ants care for and protect the aphids from any predators. Of course, these ants are known for their incredible ability to weave their nests. The larvae produce silk, which the workers then use, stitching the leaves into place. The result, massive complex nests spanning multiple branches. To bridge gaps or pull leaves closer, Workers link their bodies together to form living chains. These chains can be incredibly strong and they are genius in their engineering abilities. Look at how these ladies flatten themselves out to pull with as much effort as possible. The end result, these green leafy pods that are scattered over the tree. Once the colony started to expand in the original tree, Chris added an empty plastic soft drink bottle, which they flocked to and used as a nest. It was so successful and filled up so quickly, he added another bottle. The plant grew and the colony thrived. These translucent bottles proved a fascinating way to continue to observe the complex nest structure and colony activity that is almost always invisible to us with these weaver ants. The first thing they do is plug up all the entry holes with a delicate silk made from the larvae. Inside, hollow chambers are formed from the silk, almost like natural rooms. Unlike soil nests, there's no dirt, wood or debris inside, just a clean, dry space for the brood to develop. Chris gave me an empty nest to study, and you can really see the complex 3D layered chambers they have constructed inside. So a big thank you to Chris for giving us some understanding of these green weaver ants and the best way to raise them to colony stage. It's one of the most fascinating colonies I've personally seen, and I hope you enjoy them as well. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more ant keeping adventures and tips. Until next time, happy ant keeping.